Thingiverse is a website for the 3D printing design community. Uh, users of Thingiverse can freely download designs. Uh, they can modify pre-existing designs and upload their new, their versions, or they can combine design, uh, combine multiple designs, and uh, create something new. We looked at designs that were submitted to Thingiverse over the course of more than three years. It was more than 16,000 designs, and some of the success metrics we were interested in were the number of uh, likes uh, of uh, any given design, the number of makes, meaning how many people downloaded that design, 3D printed it, took a picture of it, and then later uploaded that picture back to Thingiverse. And because of the Prezi logo, you cannot really see it. So uh, the number of child designs. So how many designs were uh, inherited ideas from that design later on? Uh, we were also interested in under uh, measuring novelty in a more objective way than the ones currently used. Most of the scientists uh, looking at uh, how people innovate and create something novel usually focus on either analyzing uh, the network attributes of the process or they usually evaluate innovation from a more uh, in a qualitative way which sometimes can be uh, somewhat subjective. So we we adopted a method primarily used in computer graphics, and what that method basically does when comparing two given designs is uh, focus on their shape differences. So basically, the distance we would get from uh, implementing that method will give us an understanding of how different they are uh, from the geometrical perspective. So such a method not only allows us to understand the individual contribution of someone uh, in Thingiverse uh, and in the process of uh, adopting others' ideas, but, yeah, it's a bit loud, but also it allows us to compare any given Thingiverse design with any uh, design that was submitted on Thingiverse uh, before it. So in a multi-dimensional space where its dimension is any prior design, we can understand whether uh, the design that is proposed or submitted uh, is, has in its relative neighborhood any other designs. So that's, that's an understanding of how novel the design was at the time of submission. <clears throat> uh, something that probably we expected was that novelty was associated with popularity, meaning that uh, more novel designs, the way I described being as novel, uh, were uh, also more popular compared to imitative design or less novel designs. But somewhat unexpectedly, we also saw that practicality was associated with uh, novelty. Uh, meaning that uh, designs that were no more novel also tended to be printed more. In addition, we were interested in the value of uh, openness, meaning whether participants of Thingiverse were actually deriving some uh, value uh, out of their participation in an open, open collaboration environment like Thingiverse. And to test that, we categorized designs depending on whether they had inherited ideas from any other prior design in Thingiverse or they were standalone designs, meaning that the whole creation process happened outside Thingiverse. And again, as you can see, uh, inherited designs outperformed standalone designs, both in, both in terms of likes and in terms of makes. And as, as going a step further uh, on the inherited designs, we classified them depending on the total number of parents these designs had. And as you can see, designs that had uh, more parents uh, tended to receive a higher number of, uh, of likes. Focusing on designs with only one parent, it seemed that the best strategy designers could follow would be to 
build upon prior creations of theirs, suggesting that a more modular process should be followed when inheriting from only one design. Uh, also, we, when we looked at designs with two parents, it seemed that the optimal strategy that someone could follow would be to uh, use one of his prior, oh, sorry, to use, use one of his prior designs and one uh, design of someone else's, given that his final design will be closer, more similar to his prior design. Some, some, uh, another part of uh, the work we're currently exploring is, uh, uh, is related to lead users. Lead users from the academic perspective are people that uh, face needs that others will focus in the future. And also they are typically people that will benefit uh, more from proposed solutions. And why these people might be interesting is that in open collaboration environments like Thingiverse, uh, people, uh, the, a fraction of the people contributes the majority of the content. So in Wikipedia, 1% of the editors contributes more than half percent, more than half of the content, and in Thingiverse, 5% of the users contributes about half of uh, all designs. And usually what uh, were people would focus uh, in academic papers, at least, is the, not the contribution. So how many designs do, uh, just the number of designs someone has submitted in total, which usually is a good metric, but as you can see, it's, it's not very accurate. So uh, with, with that intuition, we, we realized that that might not be the best metric to have. So as you can see, some of the people keep showing up uh, in the top 10 list in all categories, but not everyone is, uh, not, there's no one that is always top or, so it, we, we wanted to find a more sophisticated uh, metric for how we can actually evaluate the contribution of someone in an open collaboration environment like Thingiverse. So to test whether contribution would be a good metric, we classified, uh, users depending on how often they would contribute. So blue is people that on average they would contribute a design every uh, three weeks or, or less. And people with uh, under orange are all the people that followed a much longer production cycle. And as you can see, people that would follow a much longer production cycle were performing much better. So that, that that kind of uh, justifies why a more sophisticated evaluation might make sense. So from these five attributes, if we go get them down to, to two, you can see that there are a bunch of users that uh, distinguish themselves from uh, the pack. And also, uh, we were interested in understanding whether designers uh, we, we would be able to uh, 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 identify lead users early on. And this is uh, just a representation in, or in 3D of uh, uh, the metrics I showed you before. And uh, on the left, upper left side, you can see that uh, what we did was basically just take the very first design of uh, Thingiverse users and then classify them in three categories. So people classified as green were people that their very first design performed uh, quite well. Yellow was about average and red was performed well in their very first design. And as you can see, especially people that didn't perform very well, uh, basically they, they were, they started uh, stop, uh, they, they could they quickly stop contributing. So as you can see, after 20 designs they, or 50 designs, uh, people classified as green or high performance in their first design basically take over the, the contribution. Uh, finally, we looked at uh, uh, designers that had at least 25 designs and classified them again as with whether their popular design 
uh, the very first design was popular or unpopular and as you can see although there it seems to be a pattern that people are start cutting up so there is a learning uh, involved in the community even after 25 designs uh, people that didn't perform well in their first design still didn't cut up with uh, uh, better designers uh, uh, initially so I, our work focuses on uh, pre predicting uh, design success early on, so understanding just by the attributes of the design whether it will be uh, successful or not. We also want to build a system that will uh, suggest remixes to potential makers and inventors. And finally, identify uh, early on and support lead users. Uh, I think that would be all. Any questions? Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, we, oh, yeah, so the question was if we have used our method in anything else besides Thingiverse. So, then novelty metric, because it's based upon uh, 3D designs, uh, it, it is difficult to be applied somewhere else because we need to also have success metrics. So it's kind of limited in any digital format of, of an object. So for that one, no. We, we've been looking at other open innovation and communities like GitHub and some patterns exist, but we're early on in our uh, analysis. So I cannot really say yes or no. Okay, thank you. Oh, yep. How about other uh, printing uh, communities like Sheepay? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. So, uh, the, the, should I? Re yeah. So, the question was uh, whether we have checked other three D printing communities like Shapeways. So, Shapeways has some of their designs as freely download, uh, so people can freely download them, but doesn't support remixing. So it's difficult for us to keep track of what's going on there. And on top of that, the vast majority of designs on in safe ways are not even available. You just order the 3D part and you get the physical object. So yeah, that, it, it was something we're looking at, but we haven't done it so far. Yeah, well, it, it, it has the, yeah, probably the largest repository, although Thingiverse now with the customizer has a lot of designs also, but Thingiverse by far is the most open, largest open repository, so that was what we were interested in. Okay, any other questions? Yep. Well, quality will be probably difficult to justify. Uh, that's why we were interested in uh, novelty and wa wanted to compare it to any other given design. However, there is a pattern in uh, the complexity, meaning that designs, designs that had more parts also tended to be highly likable. But however, there was, they, they were less made, so people tended to also make those designs less because probably of the complexity of figuring it out later. Uh, okay. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have